Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning. Um, it is a dreary, rainy day here in New York City, but that is okay. It's not supposed to be raining all day. It started raining last night. It was just like a light little mist, light little drizzle. And then I got up this morning and I was like, oh, wow. It's still coming down, and it's coming down even harder. <laughs> but that's okay. We need the rain. I mean, always we need the rain. And again, it's not going to rain all day. So I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you stay dry and warm, and you don't have to be out in the rain too, too much. Yes, if it's even raining where you are. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. Um, this, is <laughs> this is going to be a general energy reading for... Tuesday, November 13th. Um, this doesn't have to be anything specific. It's not anything specific. It is just a general reading. Um, so it doesn't have to resonate today. Uh, it could resonate later on down the road. It doesn't have to resonate at all. But this are, these are just the messages. Whoa! Major ringing in the left ear all of a sudden. Um, but this is, these are just the messages that spirit wants to bring through what spirit wants to talk about okay take what resonates and leave what doesn't um if it doesn't resonate today then you're more than welcome to come back at a later date should you think of it and be like oh wait maybe i should rewatch that maybe it'll resonate then yes okay so with that said let's get to it guys <laughs> unicorn <laughs> okay <laughs> here we go Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, November 13th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So I'm seeing orange. No, well, yes, I'm seeing orange. But I'm also seeing yellow. Okay, yellow is the first thing I'm seeing. And when I tap into the energy and I listen for the message, Spirit says, Spirit is still driving the ship. Yes. Yes, we are. And now what I'm... So then in relation to that, the orange color that I'm seeing is us needing to maintain our control over our emotions okay uh this is not well i was going to say this is not necessarily a warning but for the most part it really isn't a warning um you know we're all doing pretty well especially those of you that have been you know resonating with these you know morning coffee readings so far fairly regularly um we all have really come to a point where we do have a pretty good grip on our emotions you know, that's not to say we may not, you know, go a little left or a little right every once in a while, but ultimately we always tend to find our center. And also we understand the value of our emotions. So it's not like we're going to keep ourselves from feeling anything anymore because that just doesn't work. But this is a time, Spirit is saying, this is a time to really make sure that you maintain your focus, that you maintain your integrity, that you maintain your authenticity. And... Um, Continue to focus your intent on that which it is you wish to manifest, okay? And instead of really taking too many action steps, the best action step you can take right now is to maintain that alignment with it, with it and allow the universe to just bring it forward, okay? Because that's literally what the universe is doing right now behind the scenes, all right? Venus. Venus is finally going direct in three days. I believe she goes direct on the 16th. However, Mercury does go into retrograde. Mercury retrograde, I believe, is going to last until December 7th or so. Um, but then Venus is also still going to be in shadow period until about the 17th of December. Anyway, just a little astrological forecast for ya. <laughs> but... I think it's safe to say that many of us are going to be very happy when Venus finally goes direct. 
I know I will. <laughs> but anyway, all right. So let's get into these messages. Tuesday, November 13th. Here you go, guys. Messages, best messages, please. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you kindly. Tuesday, November 13th. What have you got for us today, Spirit? Best messages, please. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Good Lord. So we're starting out with the Page of Swords. Mm -hmm. Who's watching who here? All right. Page of Swords. Underneath that, we've got the Five of Pentacles. We've got Justice. Ooh. And, ah, Divine Wisdom. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Oh, okay. All right. We've got the Four of Wands underneath the deck. That's pretty beautiful. Now, this here is talking about our overall energy here. This is talking about um, our balance with it our balance with the divine, our foundation with the divine, our foundation with the universe, okay? If you are connected with someone, if you are in a relationship with someone, like currently, if you're actively in a relationship with someone, obviously this is the, the foundation that you have between each other, all right? But overall, this message is for the collective. This is the balance and the grounding the unity is what they're saying within, with the divine, between you and the divine. That you are the divine. We are all part of the divine. So we are all divine, yes? All right. Page of Swords, learning. We're learning some pretty valuable lessons here, right now. All right. Seeking. Seeking guidance. Seeking, seeking understanding, okay? But this feels pretty light. It's not like there's, it, this doesn't feel like heavy seeking. Light surveillance is, the, is an energy. That, <laughs> light surveillance is an energy that I'm getting with this. Someone could be watching you. Okay, you could be watching someone else. Uh, we have the five of pentacles. So somebody feels left out in the cold. Somebody feels abandoned. And um, what I'm also getting here is that it is, it is this feeling in the Five of Pentacles, feeling lack, destitute, abandoned, that is causing someone to stay in the shadows here with the Four of Wands, I'm sorry, with the Page of Swords and just observe, because they kind of don't want to get hurt again. Okay, that makes perfect sense. It's just that in that case, that energy just feels a little naive. You know, it's like, uh, sorry guys, my hands are a little dry. Um, so I'm getting some lotion. <laughs> uh, I need more. <laughs> Um, it's just that, that that feels, it just feels naive, you know, but someone is just, maybe, maybe someone's not ready to put themselves out there. All right. Uh, the justice card is in the center of the deck, or I'm sorry, of the reading. We have justice here. And this feels like in the long term, justice is going to be brought to a situation. It's like someone is standing in the shadows, just kind of observing a situation while justice is brought in. <clears throat> or, well, they may be trying to figure out, someone, some of you might be trying to figure out how to bring justice to a situation. You know, how to balance the scales. Justice, you could be dealing with a Libra. 
if you're connecting with someone, you could be dealing with a Libra or another air sign in the Page of Swords. But again, this is a general reading, okay? This is just, you know, picking up on the universal energies. We also have Divine Wisdom here. And this is a unique, this is like a, a unique card to this deck. I am going to read from the book, all right? But what I, from what I understand from this card already, it's about, you know, what is your high, what are you learning from the universe, from your higher self? And we have the Page of Swords here, all right? So it's like someone's trying to learn more. Someone is seeking guidance. You could really be uh, really tuning in, you know, to the divine. But in the physical world, it feels like someone is really watching someone else or others in order to gain some insight on the situation. Okay? trying to see what else I can get from that, but it's really, I'm hearing light surveillance <laughs> is going on, all right? Um, and with the justice card here, someone doesn't really know, someone feels a lack of worth. It's almost like with the five of pentacles here, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's like someone has a lack of worth, a lack of self-worth, which is why they would be standing in the shadows as the Page of Swords. There's immaturity here. There is na na naivete. I don't even know how to say that. Naivety. Na there's naiveness. I don't know. Whatever. However you pronounce that, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but there's it's a, but the, also the trouble that I'm having with this is it's contradictory in the fact that underneath the deck, the supporting energy is the Four of Wands. So there is solid foundation. There's solid commitment here. But then the, the divine spirit brings my attention back to justice. And they say everything is going to work out in the end. R justice will be brought to the situation, ultimately. I do want to read this card of divine wisdom here. Where are you? There you are. <coughs> The goddess Isis stands within a rose garden beneath an ancient caduceus and a cosmic and the cosmic Orphic egg. The symbol, I'm sorry, each a symbol of unity with our celestial origins to the divine. Isis is the eternal goddess and great magician and a timeless expression of the divine feminine. She encourages us to activate and reclaim our sovereignty and power and helps awaken our individual and collective healing. It says, divine wisdom comes as a sacred reminder of the sovereign, the sovereign truth that rests within you, waiting to be reclaimed and activated now. Depicted is in, in this key as the represent, representation of Isis, the lunar goddess of 10,000 names, we are reminded of the cycles of time that have birthed many sages, mystics, and ascended guides who have also filled our collective narrative of magic and mystery. The floodgates are beginning to open as the seeded wisdom of the ancient mysteries are now pouring through. This is the divine knowledge that exists within your cellular memory and the power of your own unique story. You may be experiencing a breakdown of the artificial structures that wish to fall by the wayside as new forms of wisdom stir within your heart. This may also include, uh, I'm sorry, indicate a deeper sense of awakening as you connect with various forms of teachings, lineages, or philosophies that call out from beyond this lifetime. So that makes a whole lot of sense, especially with the Page of Swords here, okay? And that was the first thing I was getting. There's learning, okay? Light surveillance. Um, I'm, I, th I, do, I do want to... So I think I, I think I'm gonna pull a little bit more for this just to get a little more clarity on the situation and then we're gonna clarify. But 
because I, I feel like there's a little more to the energy or a little more to the story right now than what we see in front of us. But with the Four of Wands here, ooh, I almost spilled my coffee all over my cards. <laughs> with the Four of Wands here, what I'm getting is that there is a reconstitution of one's foundation within the self. The energies of the five, of, I'm, this is all making sense now. The five of pentacles is talking about someone feeling destitute, um, feeling lack, feeling left out in the cold. And a message that I've been, that's been coming through with the five of pentacles lately has been, only you can make you feel left out in the cold. Okay. You know your own self-worth. You know your own true value. And if you don't believe that, then you are subject to feeling uh, lack. Um, again, left out in the cold, uh, destitute, impoverished, that kind of thing, right? So what's happening here? Some of you, some of us, I am going to say us because we're a collective here. We're all going through this together, okay? But some of us are going through a moment where, you know, they're learning more about their true selves and their self-worth. And justice is being brought into the situation here. I'm going to pull a little bit more. I am going to leave the four of wands right here. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Underneath the deck, underneath that, you have the magician. So this is good, even though someone might feel like they don't have enough, like they're not good enough, there is still an energy of manifesting the truth. Oh, look at that. We have the chariot. The chariot did come out yesterday. The chariot is Cancerian energy. You could be connecting with a Cancer. And the last card that came out is Temperance. Could be dealing with a Sagittarius. But that's only if this resonates with you when it comes to romance. This doesn't really feel like a romance reading right now, okay? This really just feels like a reading, a, a, a general energy, obviously. It's supposed to be a general energy pull, but um, so patience. Patience with yourself. Patience with the process in temperance. Uh, there are moves being made, okay? And just like I said in the, you know, in the beginning of the reading, I was saying to you that the divine is saying that you know, we are still very much driving this ship right now, all right? So you just have to trust us, and you just have to be patient. You have to maintain your alignment. Now, for some of you who are dealing with this, first of all, I do want to point out that something about the moon here, um, we just came out of a new moon. The full moon is coming up. I believe that's on the 22nd. I could be wrong. Probably wrong. <laughs> But anyway, the full moon is coming, all right? So some of you are already feeling this because of the full moon, all right? I mean, it is, what, today's the 13th. And if it is the 22nd, it's nine days from now. I don't know. It's sometime. It's coming. That's all I know. It's coming, okay? So this is what really could be helping bring this to light for you, right? We have another depiction of the moon here with justice. So this could be something that you, some of you go through over the full moon. But this is all in service of fortifying you. Fortifying you with the Four of Wands, all right? Getting you to see yourself in a much stronger light. Getting you built up so that you can continue to align with the manifestation that you're moving to, I'm moving to, we're all moving to with the chariot. The universe is still very much driving this ship. Spirit is still very much driving this ship, okay? And that's mainly why temperance is here. Because all we can do is kind of just like sit back and do our, do our best to <laughs> do our best to enjoy the ride. Okay? With temperance, patience, balance, alchemy, faith, trust. I mean, that's where faith and trust and hope are more energies of the star, but that's what I'm getting here overall, okay? Alrighty, guys. 
I do want to say though, with the Page of Swords, I feel like some someone is watching another person and saying like, oh my God, how do you do that? How are you so strong? Or how are you so empowered? Blah, blah, blah. How can I do that? Some of you may be, um, you know, looking to someone else for inspiration, for guidance. If we are talking love, because some of you want to talk about love. You do have a solid foundation within yourself, which is why someone else would be watching you. Now, you may be feeling left out in the cold with the Five of Pentacles, kind of abandoned, maybe even ghosted. But if someone is watching you, they are more, they are deeper in this energy than you are, which is why they would be watching you from the shadows. <laughs> You know, like the energy of like hiding in your bushes. I'm not suggesting that anyone's actually hiding in someone else's bushes. I'm just saying that's kind of what it feels like. Like watching from a distance, watching from afar, probably not really saying anything. Wanting to wanting to move forward with the chariot, but not feeling like they have enough. With the five of pentacles. Now Ultimately, justice is going to be brought to the situation. The balances are the, the scales are going to be balanced. Excuse me. Um, and divine wisdom is here, and that's where I'm getting the energy of. It's like you're inspiring someone to be better, a better version of themselves, maybe better than who they were yesterday or the day before, or something like that. It's that, that kind of energy. And now I'm looking at temperance and I just feel, I feel this deep, deep compassion. Whoever this is resonating for, you know, whoever is in this five of pentacles energy, feeling like you don't necessarily have enough to step up to someone. To make a move towards someone. I just want to like wrap you, wrap you up and like, coddle you a little bit <laughs> because you don't have to feel that way you don't have to be afraid I mean I'm not I mean uh, I feel like I'm talking to someone specifically and you the four of wands is here I'm not sure you I'm not sure if you are whoever I'm speaking to I'm speaking to someone maybe even a few people directly right now the Four of Wands is here. The Four of Wands is a card of foundation, like I've said. It's a card of commitment. It's a card of family. It's also a card of celebration. However, this is not a card where you can just like rest on your laurels and everything's all fine and dandy because you know you've got this nice house. Um, it's also a card of housing, of housing, of the, the home. Um, so, so, okay. With that said, before I go any further, some of you might be trying to move, find a new home, which is which is what you could be seeking here with the Page of Swords and the Chariot also. Some of you may be even moving overseas. Anyway, the Four of Wands is here, and the Four of Wands talks about solid foundation. If you're connecting with someone and you don't feel like you are good enough, like you have enough, this really could be a material in nature. Maybe, you know, you are un of the impression that someone is doing better than you financially. Someone has more than you financially or physically. And you just feel like you can never live up to that, like you'll never be enough. That is not the case. Because what I'm going to go ahead and say, with the Four of Wands here, whoever you're connecting with, I don't believe they see you that way. I really feel like this is a mutually balanced 
situation emotionally. Okay? It almost breaks my heart to feel this from someone. Okay, I'm gonna start with the clarifying. We're gonna we're gonna start with that five of pentacles. Um, I am gonna say that the divine is trying to teach you or someone, whoever, whatever. Divine is always the, the divine is always trying to teach us things. It's what we're here for. And I want I do want you guys to recognize. Look at this here. This is very, very interesting. I love the way the tarot works in the sense that there are all these little subtle nuances that when you when you like really study the cards and meditate on them, you'll get deeper messages just by looking at the images. Do you see how goddess Isis, the woman in justice, are both looking at this woman here on the Five of Pentacles? And the woman on the Five of Pentacles is looking back at them. And... You see how intently they seem to be looking at, at this woman in the Five of Pentacles, like trying to coax her out of that destitute, lack feeling. The divine is really trying to get us to understand our value as we truly are, not as the rest of the world says we should be. And therein, lies the temperance, the balance, the alchemy, okay? All right, one more shuffle, and then we're going to start clarifying with the Five of Pentacles. Okie dokie. Please clarify the Five of Pentacles spirit. Thank you so much. Four of Pentacles. Well, gee, that's interesting. All right. Uh, so far, the Knight of Pentacles is under, underneath the deck. So this is a slow process. But there, okay, but also, there's something that someone needs to let go of. I'm getting, for some of you, this is a past relationship that has run its course. I mean, yeah, okay. We're good there. Oh, look at that. Temperance is underneath the deck again. All right? But there is something, there's something that needs to be let go of here. Holding on too tightly. It's in the past. It could be a relationship. If some of you have just come out of, re of a relationship, and it's like you're holding on, you're holding on to what it used to be, to who you were in that situation, ouch, in that relationship, okay? Um, let me move this here so you guys can see it. But Temperance is underneath the deck again. So, two things. One, uh, you could be really holding on to, you know, your money. Um, this is, this actually, to be honest, this is an effect of Venus being in retrograde, okay? Either you may want to go on a crazy spending spree, I unfortunately did that a little bit this weekend. I mean, I spent it all on food, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but anyway. Um, or you could be in the exact opposite vibration and you're just holding on to all of your pentacles for fear of going broke or losing all your money. But there is an energy here of something needing to be let go of. Now, at the same time, the divine is not trying to rush that because you have temperance here twice. So it's a double message of just being patient with yourself and with others. And for those, for the for the one who's being watched, if we resonate in this way, the one who's being watched needs to just have a little more patience. Because now my attention is being drawn to the chariot here. There is movement. All right, movement is happening. But especially if someone just got out of a relationship, they need some time to heal, to let go of the past, all right? I, I want to pull a little bit more on that. There's, 
this situation here is this is the this is the root of ooh the nine of cups just flew. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, see, I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Three of Swords is underneath the deck. This is why somebody feels like they don't have enough. And the Nine of Cups. Now, the Nine of Cups flew over that way. And it landed reversed. So I'm, what I'm going to say for that is... Somebody knows, somebody knows that their wishes are being granted. Somebody knows this, but it's almost as if they're refusing to see it. With the Page of Swords, it's almost like they're looking for a reason. And this could be, this could be how you're holding on to the past. This doesn't have to be a love relationship, guys. Keep in mind that this is a general reading, okay? So however this resonates with you, there is something that's being held on to from the past that has you feeling lack, is what we'll say, okay? Not good enough. Not good enough to move on, not good enough to have anything new, to have anything better. Inadequacy, okay? Now, this is coming from a situation that was incredibly heartbreaking, Three of Swords. It could be cheating, it could be lying, backstabbing. Uh, I'm also getting an energy of narcissism in a way. Extreme... Criticism also, uh, but whatever. I'm going too deep into that. That does. That's not necessary. That's not necessary to dive into. It doesn't matter. Whatever it was for you, it's it's made you feel less than, and you're holding on to that for dear life, or either you're holding on to that pain, or. You are holding on to what you do have because you feel like you can't get any more in some way. But the universe is here saying to you, your wishes are being granted. But because you're holding on to this with the Four of Pentacles, it's repelling what you desire. Okay? Now, what also flew out of the deck here is the sun, and that landed, that landed right on justice. In Eastern astrology, the sun is still in Libra, and I believe it's going to go into Scorpio around the 16th. That's Eastern astrology. I don't know how that resonates, but that's what I thought of. That's the first thing that I thought of. Where is the sun? Well, actually, the sun is actually in Libra in Eastern astrology. So it could be. It could be. Now, to, to please understand, I personally resonate more with Eastern astrology when it comes to my own energies. Uh, and I've started to, you know, I've been watching the, a lot of readings for you know, my signs under that chart, and they actually resonate with me a lot more than Western. So me personally, I like to go with the Eastern chart. But that, if that doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. That doesn't mean you still can't get something from my channel. But the message that's coming through here right now is that the sun being in Libra is helping generate some sort of justice here for someone, okay? And then with the sun moving into Scorpio, that's when things, it, now this is, yes. The sun is going to be moving into Scorpio around the 16th. This is in the Eastern chart. 
this is going to resonate with someone. I don't, uh, I don't know. But this is what's coming through here, so I'm just going to say it. When the sun is moving now into Scorpio after the 16th, I believe, of November, it's going to help clear this stuff away. That's for some of you. It's not for all of you. Because most of us have been in the vibration of Scorpio season is now. So if it's not the sun shifting in the eastern chart, it's also the moon. There's a full moon coming towards the end of November. And that's going to brighten things. That's going to bring illumination to this justice here. All right. Base, but the basic message with justice and the sun, I am going to pull, <clears throat> get a little more clarification. But the basic message here with justice and the sun is that <clears throat> everything is going to work out just fine. Everything is being illuminated for you. I also see some sort of success, and that success could come in the form of releasing these energies of feeling lack and allowing your wish fulfillment to come through, okay? Let's get one more clarifier, just one more clarification pull for justice, please. The Five of Swords, ah, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my. All right, the Five of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune. Both of these are in reverse. Retrograde energies. <clears throat> what I'm getting here is what is really needed right now to allow this justice to come through is rest and relaxation, okay? Because the sun, uh, because Venus is going direct soon. We're going to be coming out of these retrograde energies, which can be symbolized by the Five of Swords, and things are going to change. Things are going to stop moving uh, I'm sorry, things are going to start moving in a more desired direction. Because with this Venus in retrograde, things have been just maybe going a little haywire for you. It's been a bit troublesome. It's been tumultuous. Things just haven't maybe, maybe haven't been going your way. <clears throat> but it's okay. Because the sun's going to come out and everything's going to turn right side up again. Okay. So you just gotta hang in there. Stay in, if you're in hermit mode, you might wanna continue to do that. I've been in a bit of hermit mode lately, that's for sure. And it feels great. Like last night, I stayed home. Um, I had a nice chat with my friend and made some dinner, watched some TV, redid my nails, and just had a really great night in. And I'm looking forward to doing that for the rest of the week, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Spending just me time. Allowing <clears throat> the energies to just flow. Allowing the universe to just do on my behalf. While maintaining my vibration towards that which I wish to manifest. Yes? So that's really the advice here. When it comes to justice, the sun's going to come out. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to turn up, turn right, uh, uh, right side up again. Very soon. Once Venus comes out of retrograde is what they're saying. And there may actually, there may be some pretty swift movement because they just brought my attention back to the chariot at that point. All right. So I do want to clarify now the divine wisdom here. What is it that we're learning, spirit? Clarify divine wisdom. <laughs> Gee, would you look at that? The Ten of Cups. Ah, underneath the deck is the Fool. It's not necessary. Sorry, I was 
trying to figure out whether I was going to pull again, but no, it's not necessary. <sighs> I mean, what more do you want me to say? I was asking, what are we learning, spirit? And the Ten of Cups fell out. Now, it fell out mostly over justice here, but it is kind of, you know, a little bit on divine wisdom. But what we are learning is to love and value ourselves enough to y see... This is, I mean, you you guys watched that, right? I mean, if, if you're watching and not just listening, you saw me pick up the Ten of Cups and it fell right down on the Five of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. Oh, by the way, we have progress from the Nine to the Ten. But what I was saying, as this card fell down here, we are learning to love and honor ourselves enough to know that we do deserve to have this, the Ten of Cups. So for that person, <laughs> you, that person that I've been talking to, or the group of people, because it may just, this is a general reading, so it may be more than one person, one very sweet person, but You do deserve to have the Ten of Cups. Everyone does. And the only thing that's stopping you from having this is your own feelings of lack of self-worth, lack of worthiness. And you are actively holding on to that with the Four of Pentacles. Why do you want to hold on to that when it only hurts you? I mean, you are actively doing nothing but hurting yourself more by continuing to hold on to that energy and believing. I don't know what someone did to you or this group of people that I'm talking to. But from what I can feel right now, they didn't leave you feeling too good, did they? But see... Now my attention is being brought back to divine wisdom. That's all part of a divine plan here. Why? Because now you are learning the lesson of building up your own self-worth and aligning with the Ten of Cups that you don't so desire. And then underneath that, underneath the deck here, we have the Fool. Starting over, brand new cycle. Winds of change. Taking a leap of faith. Okay. Finally, we're going to clarify the Page of Wands, and I'm sorry, the Page of Swords and the Four of Wands. Just a real quick, real quick one on that. Whoa. Well, my, my, my. Those had already flipped over. And the Fool is still underneath the deck. You have Strength and the Knight of Cups. Spirit is saying these are the clarifiers for these two, so I'm taking it. The Strength to come forward and make an offer. Why, and I see, I told you. Why? Because whoever you're connecting with, if this is resonating with you in this way, whoever you're connecting with, You've got a found you've got a solid solid foundation. This is something new though. This is a new relationship with the fool. Okay? If we're talking and now this doesn't have to be a love relationship, by the way. This could be a work relationship. This could be a friendship. I mean, take it as it resonates, but there's something brand new starting here. All right? But this could, this really could be love because we have the Ten of Cups here, all right? Family, emotional fulfillment. That's really kind of beautiful. Now, also the other thing I'm getting here with strength is the fear. The fear of coming forward and making an offer. The fear that... The fear of 
I'm going to go ahead and say the fear of rejection, being rejected because not because someone may not perceive you as having enough or being enough. Ego. This could be Leo energy with strength, but ego. You are enough, whoever you are. You are definitely enough. And if someone that you are connecting with does not believe you to be enough, is constantly berating you, saying you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to be better at this, you need to be better at that, you need to be more this, you need to be more that, but ugh, that's narcissism. That is not an energy I would recommend you stay around that you continue to give your energy to, that you continue to give your time and attention to. That is not love. If someone loves you, Ten of Cups, if someone loves you, they love you for who you are as you are. They may make suggestions and say, hey, you know, maybe we should not eat so much junk food. You know, they may make some, some suggestions to help you be maybe a little healthier, a little happier or whatnot, but they're never going to berate you. If they truly love you, they love you for who you are, as you are, in this moment, and have no real intentions of molding or shaping you into something that you're not. That is true love. Come as you are. Stay as you are. I don't want to change you because I love you as you are right now. And that's enough for me. That is true love. But if someone is trying to get you to... And they and they may even they may even say it. This is gas. It's gaslighting. It's narcissism. It's like they're they're saying, "Oh well, I just want you to be the best version of the, yourself that you can be." Well, okay, that's great, but why are you berating me in the process? Why can't I just be who I am? Why do I have to be something more? But understand that that energy comes from their own lack of self worth. It really has nothing to do with you. It more, has more to do with them, okay? Ooh. Ooh, that was a specific message. <laughs> All right, guys. We are now going to get into the Oracle section. Um, I do, uh, someone, one of my subscribers, one of the viewers, one of the regular viewers, did suggest, did ask that I use the animal cards. I did that yesterday. I liked it. I'm going to continue. I'm going to do it again today. So, and then I'm going to close the reading with a Whispers of Love pull. Yes, because we are still in that Venus retrograde, guys. All right, spirit. Best guidance, best messages, please, for today, November thirteenth. Woo, Beaver! Look at that! Look at that! Wow! 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 Okay, Beaver came out yesterday. It was on the underneath the bottom of the deck. Woo, Buffalo! All right, so I am gonna read these here. Ah, Cobra, Beaver, Cobra. Unicorn. Oh, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look, the unicorn came out. <laughs> and then we have Owl. All right, so we have a bit of messages. We have quite a bit of messages here. So just stay with me. I'm going to start with Buffalo. That's underneath the deck. Buffalo. Okay, let's do it this way. Ooh, and underneath Buffalo, we have Crow. Yes, I love crows. Crows are one of my favorite animals. Crows are, well, birds. Crows are, but it's because of the energy that they bring forward. It's because of the fact that they, um, 
they are agents of change. Many people are afraid of crows because they symbolize death and they think they automatically think, uh oh, someone's dying. Well, keep in mind, death is a transformation. Crows are very magical, mystical creatures. I love seeing them around. Whenever a crow is around, I get excited. So crow with crow being underneath the deck here, we're talking major transformation. I mean, in Western astrology, we are in 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 Scorpio season, right? I know that gets so confusing, but it's really about what you resonate with the most. So I am going to talk about both because I'm trying to keep the doors open to everyone. But just so that you guys know, I resonate more with Eastern astrology than Western. Just throwing that out there. But since I am here in the United States, most of my subscribers, most of my viewers are in the United States, and most of us are used to dealing with Western astrology. We're going to talk about that too, okay? Scorpio season, for a lot of us, is major transformation, major change. And crow, this is, on, this is happening on the wings of the crow, is what spirit is saying, the universe is saying. So that's pretty beautiful. We're going to start with Buffalo here. Grounded yet heavy, heavenly, sorry, grounded yet heavenly, practical yet spiritual. The hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth, yet its heart and mind arise, rise toward heaven. The buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road that has an opportunity that, I'm sorry, the buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment. Therefore, the buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. Its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. We may all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time. And may we, I'm sorry, let me say that again. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time. And may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. I was having trouble reading with reading that because as I was reading that card, I was connecting with um, the Divine Masculine. I was seeing the Divine Masculine in this card and I was getting emotional because it is a masculine energy that is going through this. Five of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles. Holding on to some sort of feelings of lack, which are blocking the wish fulfillment. I like, I, I'm almost getting choked up, like almost like I want to cry because what I'm feeling from this person or these individuals, the Divine Masculine Collective as a whole, because it's more than just one person. There are many people that are going through this right now that are blocking their true wish fulfillment because of feelings of lack. That, and what was coming through with Buffalo for, for this masculine energy, whether you're a man or a woman physically, this masculine energy is beautiful, is loving, is caring, is kind, is near. I want to cry right now. And the fact that such beautiful qualities are, in essence, beaten out of, men or masculine energies because it's not mass it's not macho it's not this it's not but i just want to cry because whoever i was connecting with here with the five of pentacles and the four of pentacles i see this person or these people as the buffalo and the beaver which i'm going to get into right now the beaver hard worker loyal tireless family first. The beaver personality is a welcome sight. I love when the beaver comes out. I'm very much a family-oriented person myself, so whenever the beaver comes out, I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> These good-natured and dependable creatures have infinite love and enthusiasm for family and express it by way of the earth element, providing a home and financial stability. Although a beaver doesn't usually initiate a project, once started, they'll work steadily for weeks, months, or years to see it through. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires your long-term study, long-term steady effort. It can also signify that it's time for some karma yoga or selfless service, all right? Next, we have Cobra. I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible because this is almost an hour long. We're at like 55 minutes already, 54, excuse me. Cobra, pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The Cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever-present, ever-protecting, ever-loving. 
The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests externally in those special guides who led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And this is absolutely what's happening right now because even though, even though somebody is holding on to these feelings here of lack, of um, insignificance, you're going through a process right now of finally letting this go because I really feel like this is someone that has been, this is something that someone's been holding on to or some of you have been holding on to for a very long time. And if you are coming out of a relationship, I'm picking up right now that if you're coming out of a relationship in which this was almost like reinforced for you or uh, um, this, you attracted this relationship in order to heal this aspect of yourself. So this is why um, it might have been a central theme of that relationship. That relationship helped to serve, to, to teach you to value yourself, to have a better, a 55-55 on the counter, change, yes, change, to have a better, to develop a better opinion of yourself on your own, independent of what others may think of you, what others may say of you, what others may want of you. And this is definitely a masculine energy that's going through this because a major cycle that is coming to an end here for masculine energies, for the divine masculine, is people pleasing. And that's what came out here. Well, I was picking up on with Beaver. This could be family, okay? You could have been accepting a relationship with someone or, or pursuing a relationship, maintaining a relationship with someone because it was acceptable to the family but it wasn't ideal for you. It wasn't authentic to you. It wasn't authentic to the family you wish to create for yourself, potentially, okay? I'm gonna read Owl next. I'm gonna do Unicorn last because Unicorn is um, in spirit, sec the spirit section and that can be a little long and also I just wanna, I wanna end the reading on Unicorn. <laughs> okay, Owl, abundance, clairvoyant, clairvoyant treasures. The owl is a mysterious and otherworldly creature found in folklore from east to west. The white owl in this particular deck is the companion of the goddess Lakshmi and represents wealth, beauty, and good fortune. When the owl card appears, it's an omen that a boon or a treasure is on the way, either in spiritual or material form. With owl wisdom on your side, you will see and know exactly what to do with this boon how it can further serve your dharma and bring abundance to the world. Trust that the wellspring of treasures is infinite. Something, something's coming through here, guys. Wish fulfillment is happening. You have a new start is beginning, okay? You have the Nine of Cups, you have the Ten of Cups, you have the Fool, you have the, 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 the Knight of Cups. And now you have the Owl, which is saying wishes are about to be fulfilled. Something is really coming through here. And I really feel like some of you, maybe this is even a message, message for myself, but some of you may be connecting with an individual that's like really coming through. I'm hearing really wants time and energy and effort put into the situation. Really wants to feel loved and whole again. Oh my God, I want to cry. But you see, the thing about that is I feel like this person already is loved very, very deeply. And they just don't know it yet here. Nine of Cups. They may be the Nine of Cups. What they're focused, they're focused so much on in the past with the Five of Pentacles. I keep going back to this, but this is a big message for this reading. The Five of Pentacles and the Four of Pentacles, whatever you keep going back to from the past, whatever you're holding on to is keeping you from seeing that your wishes are right here in front of you. Nine and the Ten of Cups, guys, okay? All right, cool. So finally, we have Unicorn. Here you are, Unicorn. Reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. It's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist, perhaps long, long ago? The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very, comp this very contemplation explains our relationship with divinity. 
and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about a higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and, quote, wakes us up to curiosity about the higher self and the divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there is something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp something more. You are the unicorn. And you have begun your quest for the answers. So someone is really, and, and this is this is great. Um, I'm not going to read any more of that because it goes on to talk about to relate the unicorn with the third eye, uh, which is wonderful. But there is deeper, much deeper wisdom that's coming into play here. And I really feel like someone or some pe some of you are starting to really see deeper into a situation. You're starting to see that there's more to life. I'm hearing Stacey Arrico's song, More to Life. There's gotta be more to life than chasing out every temporary high to satisfy me. I love that song. Oh my God, I used to love that song so much and I have not heard it in the longest time. Because the more that I trip it up thinking there must be more to life well, it's life, but I'm sure there's got to be more, more to life. Yes. That was a little sharp. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But anyway, that's what I'm seeing right now. Oh, I'm going to be listening to that song all day now. But yeah, that's what that's what we're going through right now. We're starting to see deeper into the situation. You're starting to see, like, wait a second. No, I don't have to feel this way about myself. I am beautiful. I am lovable just the way I am. And if you can't accept me as I am, then you don't deserve to be in my life. Boop. There it is, y'all. There it is. All right, I'm going to get into the closing message here from Whispers of Love. I'm just going to do this real quick because we're already an hour in. I got to get ready for my day. I have class. <laughs> but anyway, here we go, guys. Closing message, please. Spirit, closing message for today. November 13th, 2018, it is Tuesday, here we go, focus on love, that's beautiful, oh and look there's a dragon on there, I didn't realize that, <laughs> underneath the deck you have slow down, that's probably a message for me here, <laughs> but it says, when you're excited you get ahead of yourself, take some time to allow things to unfold, all right, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. But then the closing message here we have is focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life, including yourself. If you were in a relationship in which someone was constantly focused on your, quote, flaws and what you could improve, how you could do better, how you could be better, instead of just accepting the moment, accepting you for who you are, then now is your time to start to like do that for yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror, stand in front of the mirror, maybe even do it naked, and just look at yourself. And generate love and appreciation for you as you are in that moment. Focus on love, not perfection. Perfectionism. Perfection is a fucking illusion. You are perfect as you are right here, right now. And I, I hope, and so does the universe, the universe wishes that you use this, whatever this circumstance was, as a reminder to never let anyone devalue you or define your worth for you. Never. Because the moment you do that is the moment you give your power away. All right, guys. I'm going to go now because <laughs> I got to get ready for my day. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for staying tuned in with me for an hour. <laughs> but that was a pretty serious cup of coffee, wasn't it?
All right, guys, I love you so much. Mwah. Take care. Have a great day. Um, I hope you guys stay dry if it's rainy out there for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? I love you. Take care. Mwah. Bye.